Casey okay, here with 911 Motorsports and in the majority of this video I'm going to be setting up the tube jig like this and then I'm going to be copying it to make this hoop right here. Once I get this tube made and fitting perfectly I'm then going to use it to mirror the jig and then copy it to do the exact same thing on the other side. So stay tuned and see how I make it happen. I like to start by getting rough measurements of what each bend length is going to be. And then I'll grab an angle finder to get a rough idea of what the cope angles are going to be. Now I can draw my tube and write down the measurements so I don't have to remember them. Then I can take pieces of the jig and lay them next to each other to start to assemble the tube. And every tube's different so it can be configured a number of different ways. Once you think you like it, measure to make sure it's going to assemble right and then put it together. Get it close, tighten down the thumb screws, flip the copes over to the right angle. Now I can set it on the vehicle and adjust it to fit right. It's really important to have an adjustable stand to hold the jig while you're tweaking on it and adjusting it to fit just right. Then I can grab a tube holder, which is another product we make that holds the end of the tube and allows me to adjust the entire tube jig all at once. Having the tube holder in the stand lets me adjust multiple bend angles and rotation all at once. I'm going to raise the tube at the corner because I want it to be a little less of an angle. It's good to take your time while setting up the tube jig and make sure to check it from a lot of different angles. Make sure the fitment is perfect because the more perfect this fits, the more room for error you have when you go to make the final tube. Last, I need to lock down the tube jig and tighten the hinges so nothing moves while it's on the bench. Then I can grab an angle finder and measure the final cope angles and we're ready to put it on the bench and copy. Now I can measure my final numbers, starting with the distance from the cope to the bend and then from in between each bend center lines and I like to write these down so I don't have to remember them. And then on the final cope to bend distance, uh, I'm measuring to the long side of the cope because that's where the tube notcher starts. Next, I want to measure bend angle by using an angle finder and holding it against the jig and then lining up to the other side of the jig. Then use a rotation gauge to measure it. Looks like that one's 29 degrees. Then I'll move on to the next bend, hold the angle finder up, measure. Looks like that one's 37 degrees. Then move on to the final bend. Once again, doing the same thing, holding, aligning, and then measuring. And that one looks like it's 56 degrees. To measure bend rotation, I use my fancy gauge, align it in the plane of one bend, rotate the jig, and then measure what that angle is. Looks like that's 56 degrees of rotation. I like to look through the end of the tube and align the hinge with the gauge to find the plane of bend. Then rotate the jig to where it's flat on the table and measure the angle. Looks like that was 18 degrees of bend rotation. Last, I need to measure the overall tube length and add a few inches. Looks like it's 42. Now that I have all my numbers, I could plug this into a bend software program, but instead, I'm going to use an angle finder and do it the old school way. To find the tangent of my first bend, I'm going to hold the angle finder on the, my radius die and mark where it contacts. I'm going to start by doing the middle bend first, so I'm going to measure to the center of my tube and then to the center of the first bend. Then I need to measure what the tangent point is according to my, the mark of my angle finder. Then I'll mark that on the tube. Then I need to add the bend offset for my bender. And last, I'll transfer the number to the other side of the tube. And then I can make the bend. Okay, load it in. We got center line, tangent, start a bend, and then the start on the other side, which factors for my mild steel tubing that has a seam that always goes to the inside. And we'll make the bend. You can see I got the degree pointer on there, but I still like to use my angle finder to... Okay, first bend's done. Now I can remark the tangent and actual center line of bend. It's important to remember that the tangent is the actual start, line, start point of the bend, which isn't where the tube crushes. Generally, they're right next to each other, but not the same. Then I can mark the center line of the next bend, then use my angle finder to find the angle for the next bend. Now that the angle's set, I'm going to hold it against my die and mark the contact points to find the tangent. Now I can measure my tangent point from the center line and then mark that on the tube. Then I can add the offset for my bender, which is right in the middle of the first bend, 
So I'm going to backtrack and use another offset measurement for my bender, which is the actual dies. This gives me another reference point. Then another cool trick to do is to set the jig on top of the tube and use a square to get it directly on top of the tube. Then I can just eyeball my center lines and make sure everything's where I want it to be. While I'm here, I'm actually gonna mark the third bend. Last, I need to measure the bend rotation. I'm gonna do this in two different places. First, at the start mark, I'm gonna measure 56 degrees, which is gonna be the edge of my die. Then I'm going to come back and measure zero degrees, which is going to give me a reference plane for measuring while bending. Now I can load this in the bender. You can see the center line, tangent, my start mark, edge of die with the rotation. You can lock this down in the bender, line it up. Then I'm going to grab my rotation gauge and line that up to the zero degree mark I made earlier and rotate until I get to 56 degrees verify everything is lined up correctly, and then I can make the bend. This is where having a degree wheel on your bender is pretty helpful. Now that I got the second bend done, I can adjust for any minor errors by holding the tube and the jig flat on the table and parallel to each other. Then I can align the left hand cope of the jig directly behind the tube on the left hand side. This gives me two reference planes to find any mistakes. Since mine are minor, all I'm going to do is remark where the third bend goes, which is only a quarter inch off of my original mark, and it's easy to make up for. Now I can find my third bend angle, then go over the die and mark the tangent points. Then I can come over and measure the center line to tangent number and mark that on the tube. Then I can mark the start of bend. I'm gonna take a moment to show you another product that we also make. I keep calling this a rotation gauge, but really it's a bracket that has four magnets embedded into it that you clip onto a tube and then it gives you three different spots to transfer your rotation numbers to the tube. Okay, back to the video. Next, I may need to measure bend rotation, which is gonna be 18 degrees. I'm going to measure 18 degrees, then mark what's gonna be the center of the tube and then transfer to what'll be the top of the tube. Then I'm gonna do that again at the end, measure 18, and I'm gonna mark what's gonna be the top of the tube. Last, I just need to transfer my start mark to the proper side to line up, so I'm gonna mark that on the other side of the tube and we're ready to bend. Now I can load the tube in my bender and line up the marks. And I'm gonna tighten down the jam bolt on my die since I don't want this moving for adjustment. Since I marked 18 degrees of rotation on the tube, I'm going to be measuring zero degrees in the bender. To double check, I can grab the jig and hold it next to the tube to make sure everything's looking right. Then I'm gonna lock it down, lube it up, and make the bend. Although I have a degree wheel, I still like to use an angle finder for that last little tweak. Now's a good time to mark the second tangent point, which on my bender is a quarter inch from where the tube crushes then use the angle finder to mark the actual center of the bend. Next, I can mark the distance to the copes. This is gonna be from center of bend to the long side of the cope. I got lucky that the jig still sits on top of the tube. This isn't always possible with weird bend rotations, but since it is in this case, I can use it to make sure everything's looking good. Last, I just need to measure the rotation for the copes. Using my little rotation gauge here, I'm just gonna line it up with the slot, measure that angle, and then find the same number on the tube. And then I'm gonna mark the long side of the coat. Same thing on the other side, line up with the slot in the tube jig, measure that, find the same number, and then marking the long side or the start of the coat. I almost forgot, I need to mark where to cut off the excess material. Now I can notch some tubing. We'll load it in, adjust the angle, and then line up the start and rotation marks. And then it only takes a couple of seconds to make the coat. Now that this side's all done, I can flip it over and do the second coat. Here you can see I have a zero degree mark on my notcher that I can line up to the tube. Another super fast coat, and then I get to see what this looks like on the vehicle. Set it on the bumper, and that's looking pretty close, but it's a little off, so I'm gonna put a spacer under it to raise it up a little bit. Then we'll shimmy it over. 
Now that's looking pretty dang sexy. So I'm gonna check it out from a few different angles and see how it's really fitting. The left side is just a little long, so all I need to do is cut a quarter inch off that coat and we'll be good. And here's the final tube compared to the jig. You, you can see how nice it fits. There's a little gap in the middle because I missed the rotation at the end just slightly. But it really doesn't matter because everything else is perfect. Now I can use this tube to mirror the jig to the opposite side. I'm gonna use the other large hinge so I keep the jam bolts in the right orientation. First, I wanna mark the copes and tubes so I don't have to measure them again. Then I can flip the jig around and transfer the small hinges to the new side. Next, I want to adjust my bend rotation to match the other side. Then I need to swap the coped tubes so the jam bolts are facing the right direction. And last, I adjust the cope length and rotation to match the other tube. Now that I have a mirror image of the first tube, I can go back to the vehicle. Finally, I'm done with the first tube, so I can set it in place, do the final adjustments, tack it, and then move on to the next tube. I wanna move my stand over, and then I can grab the tube jig and set it in place. Then I can measure the end of the first tube to a reference point, so I know where the second tube has to go. I'm gonna grab my tube holder here, so I can do the final positioning of the jig. Once I get it close, I can use a spacer block to check fitment against the body. It turns out this side needs to be about a quarter inch longer, so I'm gonna extend it in the middle. I like to take my time and check fitment from a lot of different places, so I know the tube jig is fitting perfectly. We're looking good, so now I'm ready to make the second tube. Since you already saw me copy the jig on the first tube, I'm gonna make the second one magically appear. Hey look, there it is! And it fits pretty good too. This tube seemed to go a little quicker. Now that it's fitting good, I can tack it in place, and then I'm gonna give you a walk around to see what the bumper looks like from a few different angles. And here's the final bumper. You can see how the tube follows the fender line from this angle right here. Coming up to the top, the tube follows the headlight and hood, as well as from the front. I back off a little bit here, and you can see we got the mirror image on both sides. And here's the final bumper, all welded and painted and looking sexy. You can see how clean these tubes look when they follow the body lines the way you want them to. And underneath I made some side panels and a skid plate as well as mounted the winch. Stay tuned for the next video where I use more of our products to show you all the other fab work that went into finishing this bumper. Here's all the products that we used in the video here. This is the full tube jig kit that comes with a pair of every cope angle in 10 degree increments all the way up to 70 degrees and one 80 degree cope as well as two small hinges, two large hinges with the extension tubes, and straight extensions for setting up large tubes. Here's the little rotation gauge you saw earlier, as well as our angle finder with a built-in protractor, and the tube holder that has two different lengths. Thanks for watching the video. Check out our website for more information. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you liked the video, and keep in touch with us on social media platforms as well.